Hello everyone, welcome to another video. On this video, we are going to be creating a Google Performance Max campaign together. But we are going to do it Solutions 8 style. If you haven't heard of Solutions 8, this is basically some guys talking a lot about Google Performance Max on YouTube. And clearly, I'm a Google Performance Max nerd, so I listen and I read and I basically consume every single content out there about Google Performance Max. And on top of it, since we are a Google Premier partner, which only 3% of the companies can make it to this status, I actually get to meet with people who develop Performance Max and just knowing all this knowledge together clearly helps me also a bit understand how Google Performance Max and what kind of tips and tricks we can do there to actually get better results. So we are gonna be creating a Solutions 8 style Google Performance Max campaign, but on top of that, we are gonna be creating with at Creative AI. So hopefully it's gonna be much stronger and much faster. So let's start and get started. On the left side, you're gonna click on your campaigns when, in, when you're in your ad account. So click on that blue button, new campaign, and it's gonna bring you to this page. So if you watch any of my videos before, Google Performance Max campaign is not the type of campaign that you can create with a traffic objective, at least just yet. It works with a conversion and conversion value uh, objects. So what we are gonna do on this example, I'm gonna select sales. So this is just an example um, conversion that I created, which is not working, that's why it's giving an error. But what you can do is that if you have several one of them, and if you want your conversion of your Performance Max to work with only one conversion, what you can do is just click on these three dots and remove the goal. So basically it's gonna say that this conver this performance max campaign is not gonna be using the that conversion, it's just gonna be using the signups conversion we have over here. So if you're happy, just click on continue and then select your performance max so that Google knows it. Naming is very important. Um, I definitely do recommend that uh, create some kind of naming templates. There is a lot out there. Um, I think the simplest that I've seen is that it starts with a, uh, with a country and it's going to go with your objective, which is sign up in this case. And the next one is going to be whatever the campaign you're creating about. So whatever, let's say that we are going to be talking about our $500 free credits on Ed Creative AI. Because if you sign up to Ed Creative AI, you get $500 free Google Ads credit. Anyway. So the very first step of Google Performance Max after you select Performance Max is going to be the budget. Uh, so a lot of people ask me about like what is the best budget. It's 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 a very tricky thing. So usually marketers don't really like this question because it like it, it really depends. So for example, I usually answer if I have to answer a number, I usually say go around like hundred dollars. Uh, the reason I'm saying hundred dollars is that. Um, because if you're targeting high income countries, $100 a day is a very um, good number. That being said, it can be very good for your business or it can be very also bad for your business. So the way that Performance Max works is that uh, Performance Max gathers a lot of data from your ads and based on that data, it makes predictions they set it through their machine learning to understand the signals, understand the audience, and then goes and finds the right people at the right time. But this only works amazing if it has a lot of data. So if it learned a lot, and clearly, if you're running Performance Max campaigns with, let's say, $5 a day uh, in a country like US or somewhere in Europe, a high income country, you're going to realize that the amount of conversions you're going to get is going to be very low. And if the amount of conversions are very low, your Google Performance Max is not going to really learn. And if it doesn't learn, it's going to bring you good results. That being said, again, let's say that you're selling free iPhones for some reason. So you're, most probably your cost per conversion is going to be very low. So maybe $10 a day, you can actually train the machine learning model in an amazing way that you give away a lot of iPhones. But but clearly, uh, whatever you're selling is not going to be that cheap, the cost per conversion. So that's why $100 usually, at least for our product, is pretty good. For our product, $100, we get around like five to six signups a day. And that would be around like 40, 50, whatever signups per week, which is uh, kind of like the bare minimum for you to run Performance Max campaigns and get good results. Um, so I'm going to be leaving at $100 a day right now. There is two types of conversions that you can optimize your Performance Max campaigns for. One of them is a conversion, the other one is the conversion value. I definitely recommend the value if you're tracking value and if you have enough conversions, clearly, right? Um, so what is conversion value? Let's say that over a week you got 100 signups, so sorry, 100, let's say, sales. Let's say you have an e-commerce store, whatever. Um, and let's say that 90 of them just purchase one product and 10% 10 per, 10 of it, uh, the 10 people purchase actually several products. So since the value that that 10 person brought 
per person, I mean, uh, is much higher, Google Performance Max is gonna actually try to find this type of people that can buy a lot of products. So that is very important, but in our case, we are optimizing it for signups, and although I kinda assigned a value for it uh, manually, there's not really, really a value there. So one person cannot actually sign up two times, it's not possible, that's why, that doesn't really make sense to me. I'm just gonna go with conversions. So just find people who would convert. That's what I'm telling to Google. And if you want, you can put a target cost per action, which I'm not gonna be doing it right now. So the location wise, as I said on the previous step, the more data I give to Performance Max, the better it's gonna perform, right? So if I go and select a very small village somewhere, there's not enough people, how many of them are online, how many of them are actually like, you're competing with also other brands, so they're gonna really see your brand, etc. So the amount of data that you can collect is very low. Clearly, if you're a local business, you gotta do what you gotta do, so you're gonna advertise in your city, etc. But if you can sell it to, let's say, whole friends, I'm in Paris right now, so let's talk about friends. If you're gonna be selling a product to whole friends, if you can sell it to whole friends, I think you should definitely go to friends. You may tell me that, hey, yeah, too fun, I know, but in Paris, actually, my target audience is in Paris, so they could actually buy more. That is okay, but don't forget that there is still quite a bit of sales you can do outside Paris or outside your target audience that you believe that is the best for you. Um, but if you were right, anyway, Performance Max really understands that the fact that let's say in Paris or in New York, you make more sales, it actually focuses on that city. Um, so by time anyway, it's gonna actually find the best one. So I would definitely let Google do the job unless you're really sure about. So you're selling a product that can only be used in New York, clearly go target New York, right? But in my case, anybody can use it, so I'm gonna go with friends, more people, more data, more clicks, more conversions, and better results. So basically that's it. As you can see, language is still stuck to English, be careful on that. Uh, I definitely recommend all languages with the same mentality, more people, more conversions, etc. But again, if your product is very, like if people who don't speak X language cannot use it, go for it. Um, so there's a, there's a small thing here. Uh, basically, clearly Google recommends you the first one. The way that this works is that you put your website and Google kind of sends the traffic to everywhere, understands which ones are making conversions, and for which part of the funnel, and then kind of like try to push that website or that page for that purposes. For example, let me give you an example. You have a lead generation business, you're generating leads, you put your website, it sends some traffic as a cold audience on the top funnel, and that person who already visited the homepage, they are gonna target him again with your contact page, thinking that, it, that he may actually convert on the contact. So there's gonna be a lot of variations like this that's gonna be tested, and when something works, Google tries to scale that to bring you amazing results because don't forget, Google is on your side, just like when you advertise on Facebook or TikTok, because the better results you get, the more you're gonna spend, the more you're gonna spend, the more they're gonna earn, because the bids are gonna be increased. So they have nothing to lose by helping you. They're actually winning much more if you're getting good results. Um, so, and just for you to know, kind of Google's performance max is an answer to Facebook's dynamic creative ads using automatic placements, because that's exactly what they're doing, dynamic creative ads. They kind of mix and match and create a lot of variations. And in the meantime, they are doing this auto placement where your ad appear in search and YouTube and Gmail and whatever other network that they have. But that being said, I know my website quite well. I tested quite a bit of times and I know that, let's say for this example, um, I know that my homepage is performing much better than any other page or I have a landing page that performs really good. In that case, I can select the second one. And on the other one, you can do schedule. Ad scheduling is definitely not recommended unless your business really requires it. What does that mean? To find, I don't like, let's say that it's very hard to find um, an example for this because every example is an exception actually, but let's say that you're selling coffee, okay? Uh, and you're you're in your street, whatever, and you just wanna do that every Thursday. And every Thursday you could make an ad, but then a marketeer could tell you, why don't you do also on Wednesday and say that you're gonna be there tomorrow on that street to sell your coffee, right? So um, there is not really a perfect example for that, but in this kind of situation where you're only gonna be selling that product on Thursday, go for it, um, why not? And then start on date, we're not gonna be doing anything. And if you are not using UTMs, you should definitely be using UTMs. UTMs are super important, especially these days for your Google Analytics and other tracking uh, systems that you're using to understand where the traffic is coming from. So UTMs are just those small, um, 
things on your URL that shows like where it came from, like U UTM campaign is, I don't know, ads, paid, CPC, all that stuff. Um, so I'm gonna leave that empty right now and I'm gonna go to the asset group. Um, asset group is clearly the most important part on Google Performance Max. Uh, so let's go from top to the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna be advertising at Creative AI, our product. Uh, we have a beautiful website and I know that it performs really well. So let's say that I'm gonna be sticking to this one. Uh, so I'm, I copy pasted my URL. Don't write your URL, always copy paste your URL, which is extremely important uh, because if you make a mistake, um, don't, don't worry. Like if you make a mistake that that website doesn't exist, Google catches that quite fast. But if that website is existing, you're gonna be just advertising someone else's website. Uh, that mistake happened for a client of mine actually. Anyway, let's come back. Google Performance Max, add up to 20 images. 20 images and then you need to add five logos and then five videos but don't worry about the videos if you don't have any videos what google does is that those 20 images you created they kind of create like slide type of videos i'm gonna be honest they look a bit ugly uh, if you ever see it but in some placements videos work much better and actually it converts better and if it converts that's what we want so we don't care if it is ugly really if that type of branding is super important for your brand that you cannot have an ugly video, I definitely recommend you to have custom videos because that's how Google Performance Max works. You need to give that for that type of placement. That being said, if you're like me, where it's like, hey dude, bring the conversions, okay? Like the slides you can do from my images, it cannot be super bad. There is nothing bad in them. Even if you combine them, it's just gonna be an ugly video, but let's go then let Google do their thing. Uh, they're good at that and they're gonna bring you conversions. And then you're gonna have five headlines, five long headlines, and again, five uh, descriptions, up to five. And then we write our business name, then we're gonna be going to the rest of the stuff, such as extensions, etc. But let's do that step by step. So, uh, images, up to 20 images. So you may tell me, too fun. I don't have a graphic designer, uh, or even if I have a graphic designer, if I ask that guy to give me 20 images because you want to make the most of Google Performance Max, to make the most of Google Performance Max, you need 20 images at least. Your graphic designer is going to hate you. You're going to put a lot of pressure on them. Uh, and if you don't have a graphic designer, you're going to spend a lot of time on Canva because let's say, let's be very realistic. I'm going to say in 10 minutes in Canva, you can make a okay looking creative. 10 minutes, 20 images, that's 200 minutes. So you're going to be spending what? three and a half, let's say, hours just on creatives, for me, that makes no sense at all. Um, and then different versions of your logo, but you should have that anyway. And then video, Google creates slides, so you're safe. And then the headlines, long headlines, you'll need to come up with very good ideas for each one of them. Google kind of helps you a bit, but it doesn't really solve the problem. So let's directly get in uh, 20 images. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using at Creative AI to create those images. So let's get in there and let's create a project. When you're creating a project, you can select just a post size for the moment. So it created by just for you to know, allows you to generate creatives for Google Performance Max or Google Performance Max type of campaigns, such as display campaigns, Facebook campaigns, Instagram campaigns, you name a social media, we cover all those sizes, such as like post size, landscape, story, vertical, and pin. So you can also advertise on Pinterest. But anyway, let's leave it post size. Um, we're gonna be generating some creatives in a matter of minutes. So you don't have to spend 200 minutes. You need to spend a minute or two with that creative AI and generate so many good, beautiful creatives that are data backed. So it means that they're generated by an artificial intelligence. So they are actually um, for conversions. So this, these designs are not just made by, oh, it looks good or how my designer feels that day, but it's really data backed. How big is that button? Is there a headline? Is there a description? How big is the, what is the font? All of these things are actually learned by thousands and thousands and thousands of really good working ads out there on the market. So anyway, post size I'm gonna select. I like to use text AI as well, which I'm gonna show you in a second. So that's why I like the project description and target audience. So, so project description is our brand. Ad Creative AI is a SaaS platform that allows uh, advertisers to generate conversion focused ad creatives. So that's my project description because I'm gonna be actually talking about ad creative AI and clearly my target audience is advertisers. So on the next step, I can go ahead and write it, but I like this text AI button, which also can do stuff in Spanish and also in French. 
that I'm going to be generating something in English. Some of them are going to be long, so we'll need to edit it, but it's okay. Let's start from the top. Add Creative AI, the future of advertising. I like that part. We don't need the Add Creative AI part. So let's go check some other ones. Add Creative AI, make your ads work. I love that. I think we can do like make your ads work in that way with an exclamation mark. Apparently, Add Creative AI is the best way to create conversion focus ad creatives. It just, just looks good to me. And on the sign up, I like my sign ups very precise. So I'm going to say sign up now with an exclamation mark. And if I want, I can go ahead and change the icons, but I'm gonna continue with that one I have. So we have a beautiful collaboration with Getty Images or iStock Images. You can go ahead and purchase something that is very premium for your brand. Um, so basically means that you're not gonna be seeing that image a lot on the internet because it's gonna be a premium stock image. Normally a stock image is around $10 per image on the market, but thanks to our collaboration with Getty, uh, you get actually 50% cheaper. So you are literally paying $5 for a premium image that even on their website, it's at $10. So if you, for example, go and say advertising, which is not a, an amazing query, but basically uh, you're gonna find some beautiful images like this one at $5. Or what you can do is you can also use our free image search engine. What we are doing is that we have we have this um, beautiful APIs in our own library as well. So we bring over, if I'm not mistaken right now, 15 to 16 million free images into here. So you can actually select one of them uh, and directly use it uh, in your ads. There is absolutely no strings attached. These are free royalty free images. So I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of happy with this or that. That actually looks pretty good. That's a very nice shot. So I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna, C cut it like that and on the next step pmax test by the way pmax is performance max it's such a long name so you're gonna see a lot that uh, people call it a pmax um, so basically our ai is kind of gathering all that data that i gave to generate those creatives for me and those creatives as you can see they just look amazing uh, for example i really like this one let's download this creative and as soon as i download that you're gonna see that it's gonna give that Creative to me, pixel perfect. Um, so this creative is literally ready to bring amazing results. It just looks amazing and it would take 10 to 15 minutes, whatever on Canva to make something like this. And I didn't have to use any of that imagination, etc., because it's already there. And you may tell me, yeah, too fun, but Google Performance Max also requires a landscape and kind of a vertical image as well. So just square wouldn't work. You need to upload kind of like three versions. No problem at all. Do you like this creative? Just go and click in this one that says render this image in other sizes. As soon as you do that, as you can see here, we have different sizes, square, story, vertical, landscape. So if you're happy with one of them, for example, Google really likes vertical ones as well. You can just unlike that. It's gonna give you the same image in a vertical format. So as you can see, the one on the left is a square. The one on the right is a bit vertical design. So that's it. That's that's literally how long it takes for you to generate one creative. Are you there's hundreds over 100 creatives are here. Clearly some of them are not going to look good. It's okay. You just find the ones that kind of looks good to you. Just as an example, I really like this one. I can just download that one and you're going to see that that's just a beautiful ad creative and thanks to Ad Creative AI you can generate beautiful creatives like that. Go to Performance Max, upload them all and literally create a killer campaign using artificial intelligence to bring me amazing results. So let's say that we are done with that creative AI. I can just come back, click on images and upload my images here. I've done some in the past, so let's not spend a lot of time. Let's select these and go for it. And on the logos, again, same thing applies. I already uploaded some logos. All you need to do is again, the same sizes, you need to upload different versions of your logos. When it comes to videos, I have some videos already, like one of them works really well. I tested in the future, in the past, sorry, and I tested this one too. So what I can do is that I kind of can select all of them. Uh, you can actually select five anyway. Um, and basically Google is gonna be testing all of them. And if one of them is performing better, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be showing that one a bit more. Uh, but we can actually see those signals a bit later when, uh, when the campaigns are published. And now let's come back to the headlines and long headlines. So Google kind of helps you from your website, AI powered dead creatives, looks good, why not? And then they have this bug, as you can see, like I click on it anyway, but that's it. 
Google just gave you two ideas, but they want you to give five to get the best results. So what we can do again is to go back to it, Creative AI. This time click on text projects, create a project and their product name. So we are gonna do the same, but instead of generating creatives, we are gonna be actually generating uh, texts. So output language is English. Uh, I want headlines. Target audience platform is Google, and I'm going to be saying that Ed Creative AI is a SaaS platform that allows you to generate ad creatives that sell. And target audience is advertisers, and that's all I need to do. I'm just going to say generate, and Ed Creative AI using AI is going to be generating those texts for me, and they're going to be kind of ready to use. So I am mean each editing there. So let's say that if I need some editing, all I need to do is click on edit and it's going to be here and I can make any changes. But I really like this, get the best ad creatives to sell your products. Simple, it can work. It may be longer than 30. Let me see if there's anything under 30 here. There's nothing under 30. So what we can do is that actually we can use these ones in the descriptions, which is perfect because we needed five descriptions. So we can go back to it, Creative AI and kind of like copy paste all of them and get them all here because I can see that they're all under 60. So on the description part, I kind of copy pasted everything. And what I can do is that I can always go ahead and change some stuff in there. Uh, Google also recommended me one from my uh, website headline. So long headline, same idea. What I can do is that I can go back here and maybe say that uh, at Creative AI is your personal um, graphic designer that allows you to generate ad creatives super fast. So let's test, retest the whole thing with different one. Design better ads with ad creative AI, it looks good to me. Uh, bam, and on the next one, get more out of your amazing, get more out of your ad budget with ad creative AI, that just looks very good. Uh, clearly, I definitely recommend you to use as much as you can. So there is more test. If there is more test, we already talk about this. You're going to be getting better results. So I'm going to put that as well. Um, go back to it, Creative AI, design better ads in less time with it, Creative AI. That actually looks very promising. And let's say, let's see if Google is going to recommend us anything. They do not. Maybe they should use as Creative AI. Hmm. So, um, Let's say just two. It's not the best practice. Definitely don't do that. So what I'm going to do is that just I don't want to take a lot of time of you. So for it create, using it Creative AI, I can generate creatives, but also text to get the best results in Google Performance Max. And as a call to action, I definitely recommend you to leave it automated unless you have a very precise one, just like mine, sign up. I'm going to be using that. Now there's some stuff that is super important. Some people don't really use, unfortunately, the extensions on Google Performance Max, but extensions overall, no matter where you're advertising on which kind of Google product you do, is very important. So I definitely recommend you to use the ex extensions. For example, on the promotion, I already have promotions ex extension. Like that one says that we have 25% first year 25. So I actually edit that promotion in some of the, for example, in searches, I know that promotions actually do appear uh, depending on what device they're looking at. Same thing with price. It all, already takes account level pricing, but if I want, I can go ahead and be like, okay, take this pricing. So that's selected as well. Calls, we don't do phone calls in our company, but if you want, you can actually add your phone calls too, if you believe that you can convert them. And if you're available or if you're a sales team, structure samples are super important too. Clearly, we also have that ready, uh, 14x better conversions, etc. stuff that I have prepared in the past. If you're doing some kind of lead generation, you can also do lead forms and call out extensions as well. So for example, I convert better, $500 free ad credits, etc. That is selected too. And if you move, I'm gonna give you one last tip. So this is something that I use a lot. For example, at Creative AI has seven days free trial and I talk it in some of the places such as descriptions, etc. But what I've seen is that if in the display pad, I write seven days free trial, free trial, for example, actually it's not seven days, so that's why it didn't fit, free trial. So seven day free trial, what it's gonna do is that, for example, let's go to the search, you're gonna see it here seven day free trial. So it looks like I have a page that is just for seven days trial, but that's not the truth. When they click on it, they actually just go to the first link that I have already provided on top here in the final URL. 
So it's just a display pad, so it's just to show it to them, but actually when they click, they go to the home page. So it's not really tricking them, it's just to show that, uh, show another information on the display part, which really works amazing. Uh, I had another client that was uh, doing some kind of giveaway, so he wrote giveaway, which really looks like giveaway, but actually it was their homepage with a bar on top, which actually performed much better compared to the original version. And then we're almost done uh, on Google Performance Max. We need to actually use audience signals. Basically, what audience signals does is literally this. Uh, Google is telling you that, hey, too fun. Look, you're targeting France. France is a big country, 60, 70 million, whatever uh, people living in there. Give me some signals that I can actually start bringing you results ASAP. So I can say that, hey, but look, these people, they are my already my uh, target, not target audience, users, for example, or buyers. So Google can actually get some data and signals from them. And I can say that, by the way, these people, they also uh, visited my website in the last whatever uh, weeks. And if I give more data like that, or like, for example, people who buy my product actually Googles this kind of stuff, like searches this kind of stuff on Google. And if, I, if you give this kind of signals, Google is not going to be only going to those people, but are going to be testing those people too, which can actually bring you much faster results. So I definitely do recommend you that to make your audience signals as strong and as precise as possible and then let Google do their job. Okay, so let's say audience test here. I definitely don't recommend you. Why can't I audience? Okay. So let's go to the custom segments. Custom segments are basically some stuff that you can create such as searches. So let's go create one segment together so you can see. I can be like, for example, at Creative AI is um, it's not really a com com competitor at all. We use artificial intelligence to generate creatives ready for you so you can like, directly use them instead of designing them. But let's say that uh, you can use Canva also to do what we do, but like you would be taking days and weeks, whatever. But let's say that if I'm gonna go after people who are searching for Canva, I can just actually write Canva, Facebook ads, Canva, Instagram ads, Canva, stuff like that. Basically, I'm, I, I'm telling Google that, hey, look, these kind of people do really convert me. So I kind of put Canva as a custom segment. And I can do more of that if I know what I'm doing, which is very important that you use custom segments and then your data is extremely important. For example, I can go ahead and put all converts, purchases and all visitors. So this way, actually, Google kind of knows who my clients are, who even are the clients that canceled my subscription. So even knows who are not really the best clients. You know what I mean? And on the next step is interest. Interest is super important. So what you can do is that at Creative AI's um, target audience, let's say, is the people who are searching a lot of stuff about marketing, that could be that, or advertising or advertising information. So this kind of interest and demographics that I give to Google, that actually is going to help them convert better. And lastly, demographics, I do not recommend you to play with the demographics unless what you're selling is really gender specific. And in that case, uh, I have a bit of bad news. Google has most of the audience as unknown, so they don't really know the gender because of the privacy rules these days. So even in that case, I would just recommend you, for example, if a product that can only be bought by a female, uh, which I would do just take out the male and I would leave unknown and female there. So this way, anyway, Google is gonna buy time figure out and anyway, that male target owner is not gonna react to your ads that much. But for those people, just like at Creative AI, I can be used by any gender. I'm just going to leave it there. Same with the age. So I'm not going to be touching that. So that is a good audience signal if you spend your time. And on the next step, we are pretty much done. We're kind of going to review everything, uh, what we put, the budget, the locations, the asset groups, etc. So clearly, it says that Tufan, you made a mistake. Most probably in the creatives, I made a mistake. I know, actually, three headlines. So just to keep the video short, I'm gonna be keeping it here, but business name is at Creative AI. But basically now on the next step, hopefully we should be ready to go. So basically on this next step, Google is checking if you've done everything good and then uh, we can sum it up. So if I'm ready, I can directly go and publish it. So what I've done here was actually very simple. Like we created a Google Performance Max campaign. We couldn't use traffic. So we are going to be using conversion. And if you do not have conversion set up ready, I'm making another video about that. But in case you need to do it ASAP, what is the best practice is that you install Google Tag Manager on your website and using Google Tag Manager, you're setting up a Google Analytics 4 and on Google Analytics, you're going to be having goals on your website. So kind of Google understand what is a conversion 
conversion on your website and then you can import those back to Google Ads on top by clicking on tools and then under measurement conversions and when you import those things now your conversions are ready and you can run some ads and after that stuff the biggest thing on Google Performance Max is the creatives they matter the, mo the most the biggest percentage and since let's say 80% of it is about creatives that's why we use ad creative AI to generate some killer texts and in the meantime some killer Google Performance Max creatives in every different format that they are asking and then since the text and the creatives are ready the biggest thing that is important so it's 8 to 20 in my case or maybe 7 to 30 um, is the audience signal so you kind of need to tell Google who they should be going after first and using that kind of signals and using your website signals etc which is extremely important they can actually bring you some amazing results so that's going to be it on this video basically I just wanted to give you the best practices clearly on some of the headlines just to save some time on this video I just copy pasted some of this stuff but you should definitely be writing some unique headlines unique descriptions and I definitely recommend you to go and sign up to at creative AI if you haven't yet uh, we do two things to, 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 to basically come and join us the very first one there's seven days free and we give you 10 credits 10 credits can give you 10 images uh, which can help you create that first Google Performance Max campaign uh, that's the first thing and the second thing is that if you don't have anything running just yet we are also partnering with Google so if you go ahead and uh, create your first Google Ad account with us you're going to be getting $500 free Google Ads credit there's a blog article about that you can go to our blog to see it about it or if you go to our website you're going to see on top this get $500 free Google Ads credit and there we tell you how to do that which is extremely simple takes 10 to 20 seconds so that's going to be about it if you have any questions please comment below if you like the video please give us a thumbs up that really is important for us to get actually more visibility and if you subscribe to our channel we're going to be producing more and more videos about that it's not just going to be about performance mags sometimes about that creative AI sometimes about Microsoft MSAN or dynamic creative ads so we're kind of like trying to cover all the ads um, so that you can actually get better results from your campaigns so that's going to be it from this week and maybe I'm going to see you on the next one bye